Hey, welcome back to Ant Lab Games. Today we're going to do a playthrough of Assault on Doom Rock, Doom Apocalypse. Now, Assault on Doom Rock is a dice card adventure role playing game um, put out by BD Games. Recently received this from the Kickstarter campaign that they did, uh, which I believe is the second Kickstarter. So I didn't get it on, on the first one when Assault on Doom Rock originally came out. Um, but I definitely get, got in on the second one, where they did a second printing of the base game Assault on Doom Rock with a number of uh, changes to some of the cards um, and some updates, uh, and then the expansion Doom Apocalypse, which added a whole whole host of new cards, some new mechanics, and uh, a whole lot of other good things. So, with that said, um, this is a pretty unique game that essentially uh, plays out in two completely different uh, phases. The first being adventure phase and the second one being a combat phase. Uh, we're going to have to face three encounters which will be our combat phase um, and we will have a certain time limit uh, within our adventuring phase to gear up and level up as best we can before we go and uh, face that first, second, and third encounter. Now based on the game, uh, Assault on Doom Rock, our goal is to find Doom Rock before the third encounter um, in order for us to not lose the game. So with that said, I think we will jump in. I'll take you through a brief overview of the setup, uh, which characters I've chosen, and then we will begin play. All right, so what we have here is essentially our our main adventure board, right? So you're going to have your encounter, and these are def these are upgrades, they're oversized cards, they originally came out in, in standard playing size cards. But these represent three of our encounters. I don't know what they are yet, but we'll know as soon as um, the combat phase comes. Here we have our, sort of our map, right? So, it, the deck, the travel deck has been set up specifically um, at random, but it has certain amounts of each type of terrain. Um, the starting locations were drawn and they're made up of one wilderness uh, town, one wilderness, and one mountains. So we basically have to travel through this entire deck to get to the bottom where Doom Rock is. So we'll go through this once we start the adventure phase. But that's, that's the initial uh, setup for that. For our characters, I've chosen uh, two characters to play. Uh, the first one being a commander. Uh, each character draws a random trait card, which gives them different abilities. And for the commander, I've chosen the Impatient Trade. So with the Impatient Trade came the skill Rush In. And it has, this is a new addition, has some random effects that take place if during the roll phase, which we'll go over, uh, you're, you're able to roll this combination of dice. You get to, to you know, do what this text says. So, just a quick rundown of what all of the, the little symbols mean. So we've got 6 for her health. She's got 6 health. Uh, 7 is her threat level, and that'll come into play during the combat round. This is her player token. Um, she has 6 health. She has 1 hero heroism token, which both players start with. Um, and she has her skills. So she's got her rush in, which is a skill from her trait. She's got maneuver. Uh, and two um, skills I've chosen out of the three possible to, to start her with. And again, we'll go through these skills in, in detail. They're only, only going to come into play once we get into the combat phase. So for now, we can just skip that. Okay, and for our second hero, we've got a bard. So we've got a frustrated bard. Again, she's got um, her dice combination. Uh, same amount of hit points. She actually has one less threat for six. Um, so 6 health, 1 heroism token, and the frustrated skill is called slap. She has a maneuver skill, which all heroes must take, and the two skills I've chosen for her class are headbang and solo. So, again, we'll go through these, uh, these abilities and how they work when we get to the combat phase, which will probably not come till the next video, but um, we'll cover it then. Okay, so we're basically ready to begin, so it doesn't take much to set the game up. Um, and what we do off the bat is we've got a couple of options. So we have our party token, and that starts in the first town location. So that's where our party is. And most, if not all, of the um, actions and cost for actions 
within the adventure phase is paid on the party level. So, for example, if something costs uh, heroism to do, uh, it will cost one heroism from each hero, not just one in total. So, um, it's something you need to keep in mind when doing this. So, if it so shows you, oh, this is going to cost you one heroism, it's actually going to cost you two because I have two heroes. Um, so, it's literally one per. The only thing it doesn't benefit you um, is in loot. So, when you draw loot, you draw one loot. But if you get shield tokens, you draw one shield per hero. So, it's just something you've got to keep in mind. Uh, another item are these um, these basically like clue tokens or advancement tokens, travel tokens. There's a name for them, but in any case, they um, each location has a certain amount of them. This one has one, for example. And by taking certain actions or taking a generic explore action, you can remove one of these, or some let you remove two. Um, but once you've removed them all, the location has been explored. And there are rewards, uh, depending on the location, uh, like this one will pay you a silver, uh, some have passive effects that will, will be in play until you explore it, or vice versa. So you want to kind of read over your cards, and we'll do that uh, before you decide where you want to, you know, where you want to explore first, and if you even want to explore a location. Uh, we also have the option of, of traveling fourth, which will push this one out of the rotation, slide everybody down, and then draw the next one. So, what are we limited to? We're limited to amount of, a certain amount of time. We only have so much time we can play um, and go through this adventure before our first combat round is going to come. And once that happens, we finish out our last bit of free moves, uh, and then we have to fight. And that fight is not easy, so we need to be prepared. So what do we have? So we have to draw a setting, a card from the setting deck. And this card is going to represent how much time we have, and will give us a basic loot table and any passive effects that would take place during this playthrough, right? At least for this round of adventure. So the, the uh, setting is Desperate Merchants, right? And it's going to have seven. So we have to take seven of these Hourglass tokens and put them on this card. And what that'll do is once these run out, we know we have to start the adventure phase. So the passive here is heroes may sell sets of two common items in any shop to gain two silver. Normally you have to sell, you can sell two commons for one silver. So this is a, a benefit um, if you get a bunch of common items you don't want and you want to get rid of them to get some silver. And what can silver do? So we start the game with three silver for the party. It's three, if you turn it over, it's one gold, but one gold equals three silver. So I will keep them silver side up. But silver can be used in shops. To buy gear. So in this particular shop, the Dwarven Keep, we can pay one silver for a common or two silver for an epic item, and we would draw from the deck. Um, if you camp and you pay four silver, you can level up either of your characters and, and earn another skill. Something you really want to get done if, if you want to have a chance at the first combat encounter. So uh, this also gives us a loot table. Uh, and depending on what we roll in a d6, we will earn this item if we do something that, that generates loot. So, that's the quick down and dirty on what's going to happen in the adventure. I'm going to take a quick peek at what we've got um, laid out here and decide what I want to do um, with my seven hours, I guess, of time. Alright, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to travel. So, if you remember, my party token was on the Dwarven Keep. So, I'm going to move over to the Monster's Den. And that's going to cost me one of my seven time tokens. So, I will spend that. So anytime you travel, it costs you time. And now I can take any one of these actions, and if you notice, they all have an hourglass, which means I'm going to have to spend another time token to, uh, to do one of these actions. So what I think I'm going to do, and down here, just to, so you know, it's, this is a passive, so if this area, it's, we're being stalked, we're in the monster's den, right? So if this area is not explored, we have to suffer a peril after heroes make camp anywhere. So. I don't really want to suffer peril if I don't necessarily need to, and this has, I think it has three tokens. Yeah, so it's got three, and these are secrets. Three secret tokens. So, by, say, for example, doing the stinky piles, I will lose time, I will remove one token, and I will get to roll loot, and I, but I also have to take two exposed tokens. So, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do stinky piles. So, we're going to look through the stinky piles. And we're going to pay another time. And we're going to 
remove one of these secrets, but we're going to gain one shield, we're going to get to roll for loot, and we're going to gain two exposed tokens. So exposed tokens I have uh, face down in a, in a big old stack, and, and what these are going to do, so I put two on each, but we also earn a shield if you recall, so I get one shield each. Uh, but these come into play during combat. If you get hit, you flip them, they could be more damaged. They really are, they, they are basically a sign of weakness in your, in your character. So you've been exposed. So um, they're not good to have. We'll just put it that way. So that's what I got for doing this. Now I get to roll for loot. Now this was a loot plus zero, which means I get no bonuses. I just have to roll a d6 and we roll a four. So what we get here is a common item. So I will draw from the common item deck. So I draw the top card off the, draw, the common item deck, and we find a Rogue's Armor of Doom. So what does this do for us? So the Rogue's Armor of Doom uh, has two uses. So one, we are not considered surrounded until the end of the round. That's for combat. Um, and ignore gaining one exposed marker. So this is good. Now the requirement to equip this is one agility. Now a your um, attributes like strength, agility, intelligence uh, are measured by how many skills you have with those keywords on them, right? So our commander has one agility and one strength. So she does meet the requirement and I think I'm going to put it on her. So she has an armor slot here. So she will equip that rogue armor of doom. All right, so I think I'm going to, and I, I'm going to keep going until I run out of time. So I think I'm going to do it again. Actually, no, I'm going to do piles of bones this time. This is going to, actually, that's not going to remove a, one of these secrets, so screw it. I'm going to do a stinky bones again, so we'll get rid of a secret, we'll pay another time. Uh, I'm going to roll for loot. I get another shield and two more exposed tokens. All right, more shields. Two more exposed per character. So we're just stacking them up. It's not going to be good, but I also get to roll for loot again. All right, remember it's plus zero. We roll a five, and a five is a common item. So we'll draw another common item. And we draw a wand of hexing. All right, so our wand of hexing, um, it's an artifact, a one-hander. Uh, requires one intelligence and targeted terrain. Each enemy adjacent to the targeted terrain gains one exposed. So not bad. What I don't have though is a character with intelligence. So we'll put this in the party stash for now and see what we're going to do with it later. Alright, so my last action for this space is I'm going to spend time and I'm going to do an explore action. And that's going to remove this uh, last secret. So it's going to fully explore this area. Uh, but I do have to resolve a mountain event card. So let's see what that does. So I draw a mountain event card and we get Zombie Walk. So, Zombie Walk, they all look so real. Wait, maybe they are. Zombie, so I have choices here. Zombie Extermination. I can lose two hit points, but gain one heroism and roll loot plus two, or I can join the walk, uh, do the Walk of Shame, and I get Camp Action, which is hit points plus two and minus two expose. We're gonna do the extermination, I think. So we're gonna lose two hit points each, gain one heroism each, and then get a roll, get to roll loot plus two. So I will remove two hit points each, so we take some damage in this fight. Um, but we will each gain some heroism, and heroism is really good for combat. Um, and we get to do a loot plus two now. All right, so we roll our d6. And we get a 2, plus 2 is 4, we get another common item. Not great, but I'll take it. And for our common item, what do we pull? An Impact Warhammer. Alright, so this is uh, a weapon one-handed, requires one strength, so you deal one damage with your attack, targeting an adjacent character, but may only be used directly after performing a move. So this will allow you to add basically some damage onto your move in combat. So not bad. We'll put this in our stash for now and decide again what we're going to do later. But we've resolved this uh, mountain event card. And now that we've cleared all the secrets, we've fully explored this. So this passive no longer applies, but we also gain 
one additional silver. So I will uh, bring our silver count up to four. So we had three, and now we have four. So that's enough to level a character at camp if I so choose to do that. Okay, so we have three time tokens left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the venture forth move. So you pay one time token. We will discard the leftmost um, area, right? The leftmost area card. Uh, we will slide everything down. And we will reveal the next card. And we get a gnome catapult. So we automatically travel to this location. And now we have to place three secret markers because this is unexplored. And that's the cost. And we have to suffer one peril for this area, for, for moving into this area. So let's draw a, a peril and I'll show you how that sounds. So this is a wilderness card. So I will draw a wilderness event. And the silver portion of the event is HP minus one if exposed. So you know our guys are exposed, so I'm going to take away one hit point from each of them. So now they're down to three health. That's our peril. Um, and now we have to draw an event card for the area and solve the event. And we get the event uh, adventure party. All right, let's see what we have to do here. All right, so we can take HP minus two, common item, and a loot minus four roll. Or we could draw two common items. You may trade a common item for one of the drawn items. Interesting. Or draw two common items. You may trade a common item for one of the... Oh, so I can trade one of my items for one of the two. Mm, I don't really want to lose four hit points, to be honest. I mean, uh, two hit points. That'll bring us down to... Eek. That, that, that's going to be a problem, yeah. Okay, so, well, hold on. Should we do this? I could do this. I could. I could do hit point minus two. Let's do that. I'm going to do hit point minus two. So we're going to take two off. So we only have one health each. So this could be... This could be it for me. All right? I didn't even get into the combat phase. I'm taking a gamble here, but I don't think it's really a gamble. And I'll explain why. So we lost two hit points, right? I get a common item, so I'm going to draw that common item. And what do we get? We get a fight club. And we add one exposed to one of your targets after an attack. All right? It has no requirements, so it's a good item to have. We also get a loot minus four roll. So let us roll loot minus four. I roll a one minus four is zero. So I get nothing. So that's resolved. And that ends my, um, basically that ends my venture fourth action. So now we got, we've got two more time to finish out our turn. All right, so I only have two time left. So with one of my time, I'm going to move. And with my second time, I'm going to camp. And that's going to cost me a silver. Um, so now that I'm out of time, I can do all of my actions that don't cost time. So camping doesn't cost time, actually. I moved and I camped. It didn't cost me time. So actually, interesting. I didn't have to do that. So I still have time. I could, I could go to the armory, solve this, right? That'll give us each a shield plus one. So I'll give each of my characters a shield. I could do trivial quests and pay. Yeah, why don't we do that? I mean, we can do a whole lot of stuff here. Um, and I still have one time left. So, why don't we do that? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to do stuff here. So I've got, I've got some actions I can take. So I've got, I can do this trivial quest. So we're going to go on a trivial quest. We each have one heroism to lose, right? And I get a loot plus one. So let's see what we can get here. We roll a one. One plus one is two, and that equals one silver. So we get we get one silver coin. Um, I will go to the shop, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sell two of my uh, common items, right? So these two, and that's going to give me 
Um, that is going to give me two silver because of the because of the setting, right? So I will give myself two silver. Now I have six. Um, hmm. What else can I do here? I've got so much, so much time. So much time. What I can do as well is I could go. I could go for another trivial quest if I so choose. Should I do it? Should I go for another trivial quest? Well, let me camp first, right? So I'm going to pay a silver. Brings us down to five. And what that's going to do, it's going to give us five hit points each. So that'll heal us back up to full. And we're going to lose three exposure. So we went from four down to one. So that's nice. Camping is good. And that didn't cost us anything but a silver. So no time. Um, so that was good. One expose isn't that bad. I still have one more time left. Um, I have money. I can buy new items still. And I have some more heroism. So I could pay more and grab some more loot. So do we want to try that? Do we want to grab loot? I don't know. So let's see what I want to do here. I definitely want to level up, so why don't we do that first. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to equip this. Um, actually, this goes in her in one of her hands, so it doesn't matter which one. And what I'm going to do is level her up. And that's going to cost me four gold, right? Because at, at, at a camp action you can level. So I get to choose three skill cards at random, right? So I'm going to go one, two, three, and I get to keep one of them. So let's see what our choices are. So we've got uh, Crippling Poison, Tree of Life, and Shatter. So Shatter is an attack, target, distant terrain. All enemies adjacent to the target area are dealt two damage, ignoring one armor. That's actually quite good. Um, your melee and range attack targets lose one shield before the attack and gain one exposed marker after the attack, or the Tree of Life. Heal one hero adjacent to the terrain to a terrain for one hit point and remove an exposed from him. That's not bad either, so. But I think I'm gonna go with with Shatter. So I like these attacks. So she's gonna gain the skill. And she also gains an additional attack die. So now she has five attack die. And these will get shuffled back into the skill deck. So Pretty cool skill. We only have one more gold, so we can't level up our bard, but not terrible. We still have one more time token, so we can figure out what we want to do at our last turn before combat. Well, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to play the trivial quest. We have more heroism, so I'll use I'll spend that, and we're going to do a loot plus one. So let's see what we get here. I roll a three plus one is four. I get a common item. I'm going to pay another silver and get two because I'm going to shop. So let me draw my first item for Trivial Quest and I'll draw my second common for shopping. Get that done in one shot. Alright, so our first common item is a Staff of the Magi. And our second common item is Comet Mallet. Alright, so Staff of Magi, you may divide the damage from your single target magic ability between any number of valid targets. Right, that's interesting. Comet Mallet. After you defeat an adjacent character, for each point of damage above the value needed to defeat the target, take one exposed marker. Distribute these markers between any character freely. Eh. Not really. I was hoping for armor or something like so a potion maybe, but... Oh well. So... I'm just going to sell these two for two silver. Not really helpful. Alright, we have one more time token. So what I think I'm going to do is take a chance here. And I'm going to venture forth. So we're going to remove that. We're going to slide everybody down. Reveal the next location. Haunted Ruins. I'm going to go here. Put four secret tokens on this location. Oh boy, that was a bad call. If this area is not explored, at the start of the battle, we get exposed plus two. 
That looks probably a seriously bad decision by me. All right, so, but remember, we have to resolve a peril and a, a mountain event. So, we'll start with our peril. And we get hit point minus one for every pair of exposed markers. So, we don't have a pair of exposed markers. We only have one. So, I'm not going to apply that. And for our event, we get an elevator. Unexpected. You may also set up camp in it. Alright, so remove all secret markers from the current area and claim the exploration bonus if at least one marker was removed this way. Alright, oh that's fantastic, this, is, this couldn't have been better. So I'm going to remove all secret markers from the current area. So we've basically just explored it with an elevator, um, which negates this expose. And we get to collect two common items. Wow, huge! So we get a black hole potion and a potion of might. Exactly what I was looking for. All right, so I will give the potion of might to my commander and I will give my black hole potion to my bard. And that's that. So we are out of time. What that does is now triggers our first encounter and we get to draw and see what that encounter will be. So for our first combat encounter, we have armored skeletons. So let me get the battlefield set up, get all the, place, the pieces in place, get the terrain set, and we will begin battle. But we'll have to do that next video. So um, thanks for watching. I hope to see you for part two uh, for Doom Apocalypse, where we take on uh, combat encounter round one against armored skeletons. See you then.